Hey everyone, welcome to this video. We are going to be talking today about the power of the assignments page within Canvas. Now let's be honest, it is probably a page that you don't use very often. Uh, it's not viewable for students. Everything that we typically have used has gone through the modules page or we're probably in the grading page. Same for our students. And so, but I want to talk to you about some of the power of bringing clarity to our courses by organizing this page well. Now, first of all, when you click on the assignments tab, which again is just in the navigation on the left, and you click on assignments, which again, the little I means that students cannot click on this page or view this page. Uh, I click on there and it brings open all my different assignment groups, or we probably have called them categories in the past, grading categories. So when I'm in here, I can see that I have different grading categories. Um, when I open these up, you'll see all the assignments within that grading category. Um, and so when I'm looking at my historical writing, which is worth 60% of a student's grade, these are my summative assessments for that. Um, if I look at my other group, I just have like a formative practice group. And if I were to toggle that down, those would be all those assignments in there as well. Now, when we're in here, these things are created at the blueprint level and should come to your course when they're associated in the fall. When I'm looking at this page, I already see that I have different categories that are weighted. Again, that also comes from the blueprint level. If you click on the three dots, if this is incorrect for your course, I would one, contact your contact director so we can get it right in the blueprint so we don't have to keep fixing it. Um, but you would click on assignment group weights. If it is sent from the blueprint, uh, this is locked down from you and you don't have to do anything. Now, here's the nice thing. If there are groups that you would like to create, let's say for me, I didn't have an AP review category and I wanted that group there so that when I did a AP review activities, it's kind of separate from their normal formative practice work that we're kind of going towards their summative assessments. And so I wanted to create this group. All I did to do that was I clicked on the plus group and in here I can name my group uh, whatever I wanted, in my case, AP review, and then just say that it was 0% and I can hit save and create that new group that's in here. Now, also in here, I would like you to know um, that, again, we can see on here, this is where those assignment group weights are. We can edit assignment dates if we need to from this page as well. You even have the option on here to do kind of a batch edit of dates. Um, and so just be aware that that's here for you. It's going to pull up all of my different things that I have in here. Um, and let's say I wanted to select all of them and give them kind of an available from date or uh, until date, or I want to change the due dates. I can do a batch edit here um, and I can shift the days one. I could remove all my dates. So this is really actually useful when you import assignments and it might have old due dates from the previous year and you forgot to maybe remove them. You could do that all from this page without going into all the assignments. So that's really powerful on this page as well as you are looking at your assignments page. Now let's talk about a few other things. Um, one of the things in this kind of challenge we want you to look at is when you look at how does your grade page look towards students from your course. So here is a sample student um, and this is my test student within my course. And we see here right now um, they have a way to filter and kind of organize their grades. Right now it's by assignment group. And when I arrange it by assignment group, one of the things that you're gonna notice here is that the groups mirror what I have on this page. So my first is all AP review. And then as I kind of scroll on down, then I see the historical writing as I'm kind of hovering over this. Um, and then I have some formative work and then even lower than that, um, I'm gonna see some other summative work as I'm looking at this. now. If I go back to this page, what we recommend for you is to put your summative categories at the absolute top of this page. Um, initially, before I rearranged these, um, they were maybe alphabetical. It was maybe from the blueprint. But you can drag and drop these if you would like to kind of reorganize them. And I would put the categories that are worth and what calculates their grade towards the top. Um, I'm going to move historical understanding up. And so now I have historical writing, historical understanding, informative and practice, and then AP review, and then imported at the bottom. Uh, watch what that did from a student's view. So here is my test student once again. I'm going to hit refresh on this page. And because it's arranged by assignment group now, all of their summative assessments are at the top of their gradebook. And so we see here revolutions, 
uh, introduction writing at the top with their score. Notice I also add emojis to the end to be like, hey, this is a summative that's worth your grade. And this is just another tip that we can give. Other teachers have done this as well and use different emojis, but to say, hey, this is what's really counting for your grade. You need to absolutely have this in. And so it is a lot clearer as I'm looking at this that these are the summative assessments um, and those are the things that are impacting their grade and they're towards the top instead of kind of buried beneath different formative work that's in here um, and different AP review material that's in here. So what we want you to do as we were looking at this is we have a few recommendations of how you can organize things. First of all, like we said, organize on your assignment page your groups that are worth part of their grade, the summative assessment groups at the top. Number two, it will be helpful to you when you are looking in here um, at those assignments. I just toggled that down with the little arrow there. Um, when you're in here, when they sort by assignment group, uh, what you're going to see is it's going to be in the same order on their grades page as you have in here. Um, it's sometimes based on when we imported things and where it went, it's kind of out of order. And so there's a very good possibility that as they're looking here, um, it is organized in different ways. Now you can edit and move things around in here. You can move it to a different category if you wanted. Let's say you're like, oh, this wasn't supposed to be writing. Instead of dragging and dropping, you can just say, hey, I want this in a different assignment group. Maybe it was historical understanding. This is the right group, but if I wanted it to be in a specific spot, I could also move that assignment and say, I want this to be specifically after whatever other assignment that I had in there and hit move. And it's gonna switch the order for me. So when I'm looking at this, I want this to be in order also by the date that they are due, which it is not currently. So let me move that back there because um, that will be more helpful for students. Um, also, when you are in here, something to note um, is that your imported assignments, anything that you bring in from another course, whether it's your own or from another teacher's, drops into this category. Um, and I'm sure you've noticed that sometimes something that you actually are using, you didn't recategorize. Now, you can do that right on this page um, when you're in your imported assignments. Um, I could easily just say like, hey, this Ed Puzzle video, um, I want to kind of edit it um, and move it to a different area. And so if I went into there and I kind of edit all these different things, I can change the assignment group um, within this to go to the new group. So let's say this was really formative practice. I wanted to move it there. I could do that here. However, you can also do that right from the assignments page. So let me cancel that out and go back to the assignments page. You can also, while you are in here, um, just drag and drop things from categories. So if I wanted to move this to a new category, I can drag and drop it into there as well. And so instead of you opening up all of your assignments to recategorize. So just so you know, imported assignments lands kind of in their own kind of category until you move them into the right one. So double check this in your course. Um, doing all these things, organizing with summatives on top, really making it clear which grades are in which categories for students really will help them succeed and find clarity. Uh, part of the reflection in this and for your challenge is to look at your grade page. When I look at mine, there are things that I for sure want to change. Notice how I use emojis at different times. Sometimes I don't. Um, I would like to bring some more like naming conventions to my course. I like that I have emojis on my summatives, but then it's kind of a free for all here. So think through, reflect on your course. What would be helpful for you to change in how you name things and how you organize things along the way? Um, we hope this is useful and helpful for you as you organize your course. Um, the assignments page is totally useful. And just as a good reminder, if you delete something from your modules, it probably still lives on on this page. So if there is something that you legitimately do not ever want, um, even if you delete it from your modules, you'll want to delete it from here if you never want it. Otherwise, it can live on on this page and reside here until maybe you want to use it again. So hopefully this is helpful for you. Um, let us know if you need anything in the future. Good luck.